Today, I'll show you how to edit raw images in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for today's image in the video description. The develop persona is where you edit raw pictures in Affinity Photo. So if you have a raw photo, it will automatically open here. The first thing to do when you enter the develop persona is to go up here and click on this button and then make sure where it says tone curve that it says take no action. Automatically, Affinity applies a tone curve to your images, which makes your image look a lot nicer right from the start, but it makes you lose some of the flexibility as you make adjustments later. So I like to always make this say, take no action. So now that we're in full control of our image, we can come over here to the basic panel, which will be your best friend in this persona. Here you can change the lighting and the colors, and we'll go over each one of these sections as we adjust this picture. So our first section here is the exposure section, which focuses on light. Now this first exposure slider is very extreme. As you bring it up, you can see how much it really just brightens up the image. And as you watch the histogram up here, you can see where it started and where it ends up is much different. And if I go the other way, it gets very dark. Because the exposure slider is so sensitive, I generally try to only move this a little bit. I'm just going to brighten the image slightly. And that should do it because we can use other brightening features as we go to make this image look even brighter. One of the other ways to adjust the brightness is to adjust the brightness slider, which I generally like to use better than exposure because it brightens much more gradually. That's because the exposure makes every single part of the image brighter, while the brightness slider just increases the midtones, so it's not going to harm the highlights quite as much as the exposure slider. So I'm just going to bring that all the way up for this picture. And last we have black point, which just adds a little bit more blackness to the image, and I'm just going to bring that up a little bit. If you want to see what this looked like before and after, you can click and unclick this exposure section to turn it all the way off. Now I'm going to keep going. Down here in the enhance section, we have a few options to increase the contrast and the colors. So first we have the contrast, which adds more of a difference between the lights and the darks in the image. So you can see that the shadows behind her got a lot darker, while the brightness on her face got a lot brighter. Another option we have for contrast is the clarity slider, which I don't generally like to use with people, because the clarity slider adds edge contrast, and you can just see that every edge we have got a lot sharper, and it really enhances any wrinkles or fine lines on the face, and I just don't think it looks very nice. So to reset this, I'll double click on this point, and that'll put it back to zero. And instead, I'm just going to increase the contrast. I think that looks pretty nice. Next, we have our color sliders down here. Saturation makes all of the colors more intense. So as I bring that up, you can see that the skin and the tree behind her start to look unnatural. I think a lot of pictures look nice with a little bit of saturation added, so I'll go ahead and bring that up just a little bit. Now, the vibrant slider is different because it increases the saturation of the muted colors in your image. So as I bring this up, you can see that it's much more subtle than the saturation slider. I'm not going to bring it up quite that high, but I still want it to be raised, so I'll bring it to around 18%. So, so far our image is looking super nice. I'm just going to come up here where we can see some different before and after views. So first we have the split view. You can see what it looked like before and after by dragging on this little slider, which is kind of fun. And if you click on this button right here, you can see a side-by-side -side difference. I'll go back to our normal view so that we can continue over here, but I just thought I'd show you how far we've already come. 
The next section is called white balance, and this is where you can adjust the temperature and tint of your images, so you can make it look a lot warmer or a lot cooler depending on what mood you're going for for the image, but I'm just going to leave this alone for this picture. And I don't generally like to use the tint slider because it just makes things look a bit unnatural, but it might come in handy with some of your images. So I'm just going to check off this section since I'm not going to use it this time, but I thought I'd tell you what it's for. And the last section that we're going to use in this video is the shadows and highlights section. Now this is a very important section because it really helps you to customize the lighting. So first we have the shadow slider where you can make all of the shadows in the image brighter or darker. I'm not going to use that this time, so I'll double click to reset it but the highlight slider is one that I use quite a bit. So once you've brightened the brightness slider all the way up, a lot of times the highlights in your image can get blown out, as you can see over here on her shirt. We're starting to lose a lot of detail here, but if I come down here to the highlight slider, I can lower the highlights and you can see how much detail we've just gained back. The picture is still nice and bright, but now we can see more of the detail on the shirt. So I think that this slider is super useful when brightening images, and I find myself using this slider along with the brightness slider quite a bit together. So now I think we're actually done. So I'm going to show you a quick before and after. Here's what we had before, and here's the after. We've definitely taken away a lot of that grayness by brightening up this image, and we've also retained the detail of her shirt because we were able to adjust the highlights. I think this looks so good. So once you're happy with your image, you can press develop up here, and now Affinity will take you into the regular photo persona, where you can continue to make any edits or adjustments that you'd like. And I do have a few fine-tuning things that I'd like to do in this image. The first one is I want to add a bit more brightness and contrast to just her skin. So I'm going to go to our adjustments, and I'll apply a brightness and contrast adjustment. Then I'll go ahead and brighten just a little bit, and then I'm going to add some contrast. I think her skin just looks a lot brighter and nicer this way. But I think I only want to apply it to her skin, not the whole image. So I'm going to invert this layer by pressing Command or Control I. And then with the brush tool, I'll go ahead and paint in white paint to reveal this brightness and contrast to her hair and her skin. So now you can see the before and after, and I think her skin just looks so much better. And as one last adjustment, I'm going to apply a color balance adjustment to the whole image, just so that we can fine tune the colors a little bit more. So starting in the shadows, I want to add some blues and greens to the shadow areas. So I'm going to add a little bit of cyan. I'm going to add some green and I'm going to add some blue. Then in the mint tones, I'm going to warm up these areas by adding some red. I'll leave magenta and green alone, and then I'll go ahead and add some yellow. And for the highlights, I'll go ahead and add some red, and I'll add a bit more yellow. Now as I turn this off, you can really see the difference that warming up the midtones and cooling down the shadows does. So here's the before, and here's the after. I think warming up her skin in this way really helps to separate her from the background so that she stands out better. And there we have it! Now you can develop raw images in Affinity Photo. If you want to learn more Affinity tricks, be sure to check out my free course in the video description, where you'll learn 10 simple steps to make any photo amazing. Thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.